Good morning, everyone. My name is Vincent Kim, uh, and I am one of the senior counselors here at Admission Masters. And today I'm going to talk with you guys about some of the differences that exist among the admissions process between private schools and the UC colleges. There's really five factors that I feel like, regardless of if you're applying to UCLA or Harvard or Stanford, uh, all of these admissions offices will be taking into account. I like to see grades as kind of like the first hurdle. If you know the hurdling event, for example, if your grades are not the best, you're still in the race, but you have some catching up to do. And you're going to have to, again, work very hard in other areas of your application. Rigor, of course, is matters. But that doesn't mean that if you uh, if you end up taking you know six APs and do poorly in them, that that's going to help you get into a good college. You should be taking as many rigorous courses that you're comfortable doing well in. Your activities can show us your passions and your interests. What do you care about? What are you interested in? How have you uh, demonstrated how you Your activities can show us your leadership experience. Are you the president of a club, the secretary, the treasurer? Your activities can highlight your commitment and your dedication. So were you in an activity and just kind of dropped out the second year? Or did you stay in your activities for three or four years? Your activities can highlight your skills and talents. What are you good at is going to matter to colleges too. And these can actually act as a hook. Having these activities can highlight that you are able to have a strong work-life balance, which they want when you go to college. How else can you stand out to colleges? Well, it's through your impact. What have you done through your activities that has impacted the community around you? Besides activities, your awards are also going to matter. Now, I feel like a lot of students are kind of lacking in this regard, and that's kind of problematic, right? When, especially, for example, on the UC application, you're given 20 activities or awards to put onto your application or academic awards. The Common App actually only allows you to put in academic awards for those five spaces. Those include essay competitions, uh, stocks or business pitch. For the UCs, they'll give you eight PIQs, personal insight questions, which is just a fancy name for essay questions. And you have to pick four of those. For private schools, for most of your colleges, you're probably going to be applying through the common application. And in the common application, you'll write one personal statement, which is a the definitive essay. It's the one essay that should really highlight something about you that these admissions readers need. There's three main areas where these colleges differ, and I'm going to talk about UCs do not actually allow recommendation letters when you submit your UC. For private schools, however, you will be usually required to submit one to two academic recommendation letters, and sometimes colleges will even. And so some problems that we sometimes see with these rec letters are, number one, that they end up being very generic or that they seem like they follow a template. So when you are uh, uh, getting these recommendation letters, we want to avoid these more kind of common boilerplate rec letters that we see. Some strategies for you to consider or some things that you need to think about. Standardized test scores can really help us get a sense of how you're doing on a standardized basis, right? On a national level. Many students with, again, perfect test scores and perfect GPAs are not accepted to these colleges. You got to make sure that you are uh, spreading yourself evenly across your applications, like your activities and your awards, for instance, so that you are a good, well-rounded applicant by the time you apply to these colleges. There are three very common interview questions, though, that you need to prepare for, and those are the following. So almost always, I'll say like, don't just talk about how you got straight A's or what your GPA or your test scores were. That's not really what they're interested in. They're literally interested. So what you're aiming to do is you're trying to show your interest you want to do your research and you want to be very specific, right? This is something that you'll do. You were to pick professors that you want to work with, or if you were to pick uh, research opportunities, programs you can get engaged in, internship opportunities. And if you name drop those, many colleges will track your demonstrated interest. From there, don't be overly serious. And try your best to not just be that flat kind of like a monotone student who's like just focusing on academics. Try to show them that you have a good personality. And again, practice makes perfect. You want to do uh, if you don't have someone you could do a mock interview with. Record yourself on your on your computer. Pretend you're you're talking to someone, and then play it back. See if you're using a lot of voice. Practice as much as you can. Hear yourself speak. And if you do this, I, I can guarantee you you'll have a better uh, chance at doing well in your interview for your colleges down the line. 